This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Friday, April 8th, 2022, and the Morning Edition is live. On today's show, the Prime Minister releasing efforts to fight crime, the Governor General recovering after a health scare in Eleuthera, a student giving back to his peers in need, and we're heading back to Cat Island. So let's start the morning off right. Company, your leading hurricane impact windows, doors, and tile specialist. Thank God it's finally Friday. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDon Davis. And good morning, everybody. Oh, in Cat Island, we're sweet to wake up to the good island breeze. We have a show in store for you from today. They caught some big fish yesterday, and we're also going to have Entertainment Friday coming to you from Cat Island with Mr. Anderson. LaDon? Official, did you catch any fish yesterday or no, no luck? No luck? Yeah, uh, well, I, I <laughs> caught about two grunts, one snapper, one big grouper, but uh, today is the big day. I'm going out on the boat at about 10 o'clock, and I'm going to catch but two kits of fish because I know in Nassau, fish are expensive, so I have to supply everybody, and you are in that count. 
All right, all right. Now, so we're going to take things, turn things over to our Aunt Renee Smith, who is standing by with your Friday morning traffic report. Good morning, Aunt Renee. Good morning, LaDawn, and good morning to all you early morning traffic commuters out there. We're doing things a little bit different this morning with your first look at morning traffic coming to you live from right here in studio. And first, here's a look at overnight stats. According to the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, there were a total of eight traffic incidents over a 24-hour period, all of them minor, involving no injuries, and we're just beyond the 7 o'clock hour where roadways are still relatively quiet, but it's a Friday, a quite busy day for traffic. So for those of you on the main thoroughfares of Prince Charles, Carmichael, and Sir Milo Butler Highway, or for those of you who take Bay Street as your means of morning commute, you might just want to get out a little early and get ahead of the rush. Just a reminder, the speed limit on most roadways throughout the Bahamas is 24, 25 rather, miles per hour, except where indicated otherwise. And Fisher, I just want to send a message to you. I hope you come back to Nassau with my catch. So we're going to wrap it up here for now. And LaDon, I'm going to toss it back to you. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Uh, here's a look at your, your weather forecast. A cold front across central Florida will push into the northwest Bahamas today with showers and possible thunderstorm activity. It will continue drifting southeastwards into the central Bahamas by tonight, and high pressure will build across the area and wake up that front. High temperature today is 85 degrees, with an overnight low tonight at 70 degrees. Now here's a look at your extended weather forecast. Minister the Honorable Philip Davis is adamant about fighting the crime war. He revealed his crime-fighting strategy during an appearance at the weekly office of the Prime Minister press briefing on Thursday. We will increase police presence in hotspots with saturation patrols for as long as they are necessary. Our communities need more manpower and more resources. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is creating a specialized task force focus on decreasing gang-related crimes and apprehending those involved in firearms trafficking. We are expanding Urban Renew to strengthen both community policing and the programs that reach at-risk young people and provide pathways to opportunities and training. While the nation's leader outlined his crime-fighting plans, the Commissioner of Police, Paul Roll, also spoke about the prevalence of illegal firearms in this country. The majority of those firearms, illegal firearms, have been coming from Florida, South Florida in particular. And what we have found is in the recent months, a number of courier services that have sprung up in the Southern Florida communities. And I've asked our partners to assist us in identifying these uh, persons and companies. We have seized 109 illegal firearms that we took off the streets on in the Bahamas. This does not include those that were intercepted in the United States. And one uh, inter interdiction that we had had earlier in the year, there was some 17 firearms that were interdicted on their way to our shores. Deputy Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander was also at the OPM's press briefing. He used the opportunity to update the public and the media on their initial investigation into Wednesday night's homicide in the Hollywood subdivision of Cowpen Road. We believed that he was not the intended target. The owner of that vehicle who is known to the police, an associate of that individual, we believe that he may have uh, been the target, but he was using uh, his vehicle uh, during the time of the incident. National Child Protection Month activities kicked off on Thursday with an event at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Students from across this country participated under the theme, Stop Child Abuse. We must fight against those individuals who cause pain and hurt the terrorists of our social order. If anyone that you know have been violated, in some cases, by the people that you love and you trust, 
You must speak up and report this abuse. There are no secrets in child abuse, and there is no excuse for child abuse. So if you see this happening, tell a teacher, tell your guidance counselor or social worker. After weeks of holding steady, another COVID death has been reported in the Ministry of Health and Wellness' latest release, a 46-year-old Grand Bahama man on March 20th. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 789, with 35 deaths still under investigation. As per new infections, that number now back in the double digits with an additional 15 cases. 13 of the newly infected from the nation's capital, one over in Grand Bahama, and another from Exuma for a total of 33,330. Five of the New Providence residents, along with the Grand Bahamian and Exumian traveled within the past 14 days. No change in COVID hospitalizations, which again is pegged at nine. There have been seven new recoveries. 100 cases are currently active. Some good news on the horizon for a number of farmers in North Andros as a recent announcement is paving the way forward for increased marketing and financing of their produce locally and internationally. Among those stepping up to the plate is FTX Digital Markets. The um, CEO is Ryan Salam and he is, they have already agreed, in fact they have already given us 1.1 million dollars in donation. We have assigned or put aside 700,000 of that $1.1 million that we haven't even touched. And that's going to go specifically into helping farmers. So when you look at the complement of women that we have across the business today, they're in the commercial field, they're in the IT field, the technology field, we've been very strategic and that women had a place not only at the table, but also that different views and not just one, one voice is being heard to ensure that we're providing innovative and creative solutions to our customers to enable their lifestyle to be even more seamless as we go forward. John the Baptist, the kingdom suffered violence, and the violence took it by storm, calling the afflicted, calling all souls in despair. Welcome to the voice of Deliverance Telecast, from the ministry that is reaching out all over the land, delivering souls and changing lives. As an artist, I travel all over the world and I find inspiration all around me. In the people, and especially the environment. I love the Bahamas with all its natural beauty. From Abaco in the north to Inagua in the south and all the wonderful and colorful islands in between. But we must all do our part to keep the Bahamas healthy and clean, now and for the future generations. That's why I want you to find a little time to do your part. I'm doing my part because I care. Do you? Andrus is the number one bone fishing destination on our planet. Sports fishermen visit our flats every year to participate in one of the most fulfilling outdoor activities known to man, fly fishing. And guess what? It's 100% sustainable. Without areas like the west side of Andrus, sustaining this industry would be absolutely impossible. So let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. For the Governor General while on tour of a number of schools across Eleuther on Thursday, here's Lloyd Allen. Once shortly after 9 a.m. when Governor General, His Excellency, the Most Honorable Sir Cornelius A. Smith, arrived at P.A. Gibson Primary School to speak with students from surrounding settlements. The Governor General was then expected to complete a similar visit at the North Luther High School. It was during his commute when his vehicle was diverted to the Gregory Town Clinic. Officials were tight-lipped on what had occurred. However, it was confirmed that there was a quoted health concern forcing a stop to the 
governor general's plans. Medical professionals reportedly assessed the governor general before taking him to the North Eleuther Airport, where he was then airlifted to the capital. In a government release to the media just before 5 p.m., it was indicated that the governor general is presently at Doctors Hospital, where he is under observation. Initial reports state that he is expected to be okay, and from all indications and initial assessments, it appeared the governor general may have experienced heat exhaustion. This according to the secretary to the governor general, Jack Thompson. Despite the challenges, a rare opportunity for a number of students recognized for academic excellence by the governor general. Hi, my name is Amitra Romes. My name is Neve Russell. It makes me feel motivated to do more in my life. I work hard and my father is very strict about my grades. Even principal at North Luther High School, Shardell Gibson, remained in good spirits. All the best, Your Excellency. We here at North Luther High School, we are cheering you on. We greatly appreciate all that you've done for the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Gibson also sending this get well message to the Governor General. We did a lot of hard work to make sure that today happened. We made sure that our grounds were beautiful. We've been in communication with the other schools who are a part of this event. The COVID-19 pandemic and unemployment have crippled the bottom lines of thousands of Bahamian families. These social issues have thrown a monkey wrench at students not to be able to acquire the tools like uniforms they need to enter the classroom. Well, one student has started an outreach program to assist his peers. Take a look. I feel very well knowing that some people will have uniforms and be able to come to school and learn. For 10-year-old Jordan Fitzgerald is a blessing to give than to receive. The Eva Hilton fifth grader established the We Care charity aimed at giving uniforms to his peers whose parents are unable to afford them. The global pandemic has pushed a large number of Bahamians on hard times. The grandson of the Reverend Dr. C.B. Moss has partnered with Janae's Uniform Center on Chesapeake Road to achieve his giving goal. Money is very tight right now for some families and it is very important that some children will be able to come to school with uniforms. At my school, Eva Hilton Primary, and I looked around and felt sorry for the ones that didn't have uniforms and needed to come to school and some people don't have uh, devices to do online school. So I started this We Care initiative to get uniforms for the ones that don't have. Janae's manager and operator, Martha Wallace, is donating 12 uniform vouchers for selected students. I came in on Monday and I saw the letter. I was like, wow, who is this youngster? I, I'm so pleased that he would have thought of this initiative, We Care, because there's youngsters like him in the community that we need more of, and especially a young man. I am so proud of Jordan. When I read the letter, I was like, wow, I called his aunt. He left a number in the letter for me to call. And I called his aunt right away. And I said, I would love, Janae's Uniform Center would love to partner with Jordan. And so I, uh, we thought of giving him just gift certificates in his name, in, in, in honor of his name, so he can be able to issue those gift certificates to students to whom he would have identified. Additionally, Vice Principal of Eva Hilton Primary, Naria Holbert, applauded Jordan for putting service above self and encouraged others to take a small page from his book of giving. Jordan has gone beyond himself. He's thought of the needs of others, and that is one of the things that we hope to cultivate at Eva Hilton, trying to get children to realize that you are a part of a global community, and each one can reach one, and so we're very pleased with Jordan's initiative today, and we're very grateful to Janae's for buying into his vision. And for his giving heart, Jordan also received an additional six uniform vouchers from Sandy's and has plans to expand his charity outreach initiative to schools across his country. Two years in and Hurricane Dorian survivors continue to rebuild their lives. This morning, Desmond Saunders shares the inspiring success story of a young fishing vendor over there in Abaco. Tonique Burtis is an Abaco farmer and fish vendor now reliving a heart-wrenching experience that has changed her life. Dorian's destruction causing a complete shutdown of her thriving fishing business in Abaco. I'm not sure how I would have rebuilt after Doreen when there was nothing here. 
Dorian's damage pegged in the billions, while his impact on the local fishing and farming industries totaling millions of dollars. Tony credits the help of Global Food and Disaster Relief Agency, World Central Kitchen, who has provided temporary relief and a ray of hope. Um, they granted us $20,000 um, that assisted us with rebuilding our fishing business, um, helping me get my boat repowered with an engine, um, helping us with ice supply as with an ice machine and freezer to store our goods properly. Um, overall, on fishing... This married vendor has struggled with business financing for years. She's now expanding her operations to cater to wholesale establishments. She's also purchased two boats it is now getting ready to set up her weekly farmer's market. You need to have that plan, that business plan, an idea of um, what do you want to do um, and seeing where the product is and how you're going to be able to obtain that product and what is needed. So setting your little business plan in place um, that helps you to um, create a plan to work towards. Um, with putting that plan in place, you know, searching areas like well, Central Kitchen because they offer yearly grants towards assisting um, business that are established um, and possibly businesses that want to get established. Months after Dorian's wrath and the staggering effects of COVID-19, this local entrepreneur is back on her feet. She's encouraging local farmers and fishermen to not lose hope, remaining optimistic and use obstacles as a springboard for success. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. On April 8th, 1991, Henry Milton Taylor became the third Bahamian Governor General in an independent Bahamas to be sworn in at the age of 87 after acting in the position for three years. Also on this day in 1994, government granted Canadian company Cable 2000 a 15-year franchise to supply cable television to all major areas of the Bahamas except Freeport, Grand Bahama. One of the biggest challenges I face as a teen mother is support throughout the community. Instead of the community trying to uplift teen mothers, they insist on bringing us down and trying to tear down our self-esteem. Becoming a teen mother helped me to realize that I need to be more responsible. It helps me to focus on my decisions because I need not to decide for myself anymore. I have to make decisions for me and my daughter. In my opinion, seeking health services was excellent for me. Honestly, my biggest support, other than the nurses, was my Grammy. The advice that I give to other teens out there is to stay focused on your education. Stay focused on your self goals, set goals for yourself. the Cat Island Fish Off here at Smith's Bay Dock. And as you can see, some of the boaters are getting ready for day number two. But day number one was quite impressive as the fishermen, they went out there and they caught their big hogs. Spectators and potential buyers were lined up early to see who would bring in the catch of the day. The boat started to come in as early as four o'clock. First in was Wade Seymour and crew. It was a little rough, but manageable. How far did you all have to go for them? Uh, as far as, say, about 10 miles. 10 miles. You happy with your day one yet? Well, could have been better, but thank God. Up next, Junior Edward Saunders. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a little rough out there, you know, but we, um, we got over it, you know. How were you uh, all able to find your job? Uh, basically, we live around here, so we know where all the jobs basically are, you know. The Long Island boys, they were in unfamiliar territory, but they did bring in a good catch. They know they're blind, so, you know, and we didn't know where to go, so we kind of run far and hope the best. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, new, but guess what? This is our first time, and we been out there, and we found some spots, so the second time around, we didn't know where to go. Lee Cabrera, 34 pounds. Oh, my God. 
Did y'all catch that big one? Oh, I can't tell you that. That's a secret. How much are you pulling at it? Um, they're actually not pulling. You know, we had to put like uh, two spears in it. Yeah, so, so, but I mean, it was a challenge. Then it was time for the results. In fourth position, with 68 points, three P. In third position, with 75 points, Lady BB. In second position, with 116 points, Big V. And the winner for this competition is no other than Lady T. -T. <laughs> Another dawn they went out there yesterday. Yesterday was diving in the ocean. Today they are going to try line fishing. So expect a lot of snappers to come in. Those kind of fish you are used to bringing up in Brandon, right? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. I see some strawberry grouper. I see the Nassau grouper. I see snapper grunts. <laughs> I see turbot even in, in the mix. So fish, I'm sure you're going to bring us back uh, some so of those fish uh, from Cat Island, I'm sure. Sound like you definitely know your fish are. <laughs> When was the last time you went fishing? Because guess what? I'm going to throw a contest out to the whole morning crew. We're going to take a boat and we're going to catch our fish for Easter next week. We're going to go out there and we're also going to scale. When was the last time you went fishing so we can go and have a competition? I think 2019, November. Yeah, that was the last time. I, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. that was quite some time ago. So <laughs> what, what were the catch? Poggy, grunts? Any fryers? Were they undersized, oversized? Did you go in the water? Did you get wet? What happened? Seagulls. Like I caught seagulls. They they took my bait. So yeah, oh, that's oh, what happened. Oh, you I you didn't catch seagulls. anything. Yeah, I didn't catch anything. <laughs> We're expecting some good fish to be caught today. Basically, snappers and yellowtails, when they go out in the water today, it is line fishing today. And then tomorrow, it is deep line fishing. So when we come back, entertainment right here from the new bike site here at the Fish Off here in Cat Island. to come on the basketball court and shoot around with us, man. Just be the just like old times, man. That's true, you know. Yeah. That's true. Even my girl, even my girl I see working out on you, too. Yeah. Listen to me. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. All you need to do is find something that you're good at and just be consistent with it. And then, boom, you look sexy like me, bro. Oh, I use a glove. <laughs> It doesn't matter whether you choose to work out in your backyard, follow an online routine, or enroll in a paid program. What matters is that you're improving your physical, mental, and emotional health. Get moving and get fit for life. This message is brought to you by PAHO WHO, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and the Healthy Bahamas Coalition. Entertainers taking to the stage to connect with possibly their youngest audience. A group of them converged at a school here in the capital to fully demonstrate what Bahamian culture is all about. Here's Jimanita Swain. After such a long lull of being homeschooled, we wanted to give some upliftment to the kids. So this is just us giving back to them. Greenville Preparatory School students were excited to hear the story of Erica Simonette, better known as Lady E, during their National Pride festivities. Probably wearing the National Pride outfits, the students packed the school's auditorium, dancing and singing with the entertainers. It's something Julian Believe and Patrice Morel didn't want to miss. And it's been a time where uh, us as Bahamas get an opportunity to celebrate uh, National Pride and, you know, teach a lot of the young kids coming up why it's important to celebrate who we are, celebrate our culture. For entertainers Dyson and Wendy Knight, these events are often memorable ones. Really it's about giving them some tangible experience with something that is 
an awe moment for them. I really want to show the young boys and girls that confidence is going to get you anywhere. It doesn't matter what industry you choose to be in. And for school principal Kristan Rogers and veteran musician sweet Emily Williams, this is all about preserving the culture. We're trying to get our students to understand that, you know, uh, from time when I was in school, you know, a lot of students tend to listen a lot of more reggae and rap, but we need to appreciate what we have at hand. You know? For them to know that, so that in the years to come, they will understand who we are as a people, at least from a cultural point of view and from a music point of view. <laughs> Lady E is hoping to partner with officials from the Ministries of Education and Youth Sports and Culture to make it a nationwide tour. Well, we are here and we are all set for Entertainment Friday from the fish off here in Cat Island. Major tunes and lines on the DJ set, but we have our entertainer today, Mr. Anderson, a locally grown talent. Tell us, what, when did you start singing? I started singing in 2012. Mm -hmm. That's when I started my first song, Sweet Cat Island. Sweet Cat Island, and what are you going to perform for us this morning? Um, th this morning I'm going to perform um, Keep On Trucking. Well, what's the song all about? It's a motivational song in a rake and scrape fashion. So I'm going to get out of here and let Mr. Anderson rock with his hit. Some people don't want to see you happy. Watch it. Stay tuned into the ZNS Network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. And is, that, is that a wrap for us this morning? Are we going to go back to Fisher? No? Have a great morning, everybody. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. You are about to connect with people who are ready to bring you the most open, honest, and revealing life stories. Welcome to Journey TV.